Hello and welcome to the Sydney Stoma channel. How are you? Hope you're doing really well. In today's video we're going to be talking about the difference between a colostomy and an ileostomy. And what I mean by the difference, I'm going to be talking about where they generally are situated on your body. That's what I'm going to talk about. So the reason I'm doing this video is I have been asked a number of times by people that are new to having a stoma or about to have a stoma or it's a consideration for them. Uh, they do a bit of research, they come across words like ileostomy and colostomy and they just ask what the difference is between the two. So that's what we're going to show you and I'm going to show you using this digestive system poster that I've got on my wall here for you. Uh, this poster is very good but it is it is kind of stretched. It's stretched to illustrate everything that, that goes on in there. In normal terms this would be a bit more bunched up. That would be right in the middle with the large colon pretty much wrapping all the way around it. So it's just stretched out for illustration purposes only. So if you follow my channel, you know that I've got a colostomy. And the let's talk about the colostomy first then, and then we'll go move on to the ileostomy. Now the easy sort of way of thinking about a colostomy is what this part's called. So this in its entirety is our large colon. There's different parts to it. You've got the ascending colon, the transverse colon, and then the descending colon. And you've got the sigmoid colon around the bottom as well. But it's all part of the same thing. It's the large intestine, if you like, to keep it simple, the large colon. So for colostomy, think about the colon, because it's colostomy, colon. So we've got the colon, colostomy, simple as that. So what that means, is that your when you have a stoma, mine's a permanent stoma, stoma, my permanent stoma, uh, all my rectum and anus has been removed. So this part here, the rectum and the anus, that's all been removed. For me, that's all gone. I haven't got that anymore. I've got a Barbie butt, Ken butt, or Action Man butt, as I like to call it. That's gone. So because that had been removed, then they had to form a colostomy, and they would form that off the large colon. So they go inside and they're push through a piece of your large colon in its simplest form out onto your stomach. So colon, colostomy, colon, colostomy, yeah? So the colostomy would generally, not all the time, but generally is on the left side of the body as well. So if we pop that there, that's on the left side, left colostomy colon colostomy. Makes sense? Simple, isn't it? So yeah, that attaches to the large colon. Simple as that. And it's generally on the left-hand side. That can vary. It's not everybody's got it on the left. Sometimes it can be up as high as, as up here, depending on what's had to be removed, etc. So it can be a bit higher, but generally it's over on the left side. That's kind of a general rule, really, but it does differ depending on what type of bowel disease or what type of surgery you have. So large colon, think colon ostomy, colon ostomy, colostomy. And that generally sits on the left side. Yeah, makes sense. So let's have a look at a ileostomy. So an ileostomy is going to be connected to the small intestines, your small bowels, which is this lovely curly whirly stuff in the middle. As I said, it's normally condensed more, this is just expanded. So we've got the small intestines, there's different parts to that as well. But the bit that we're looking at to help us know something's an ileostomy is because we've got the ileum. This part of your intestines is called the ileum. The small part where it reaches the ascending colon, large colon, this bit here is also known as the terminal ileum, the last part before it hits the large intestine. That part there, I've had mine removed and another bit connected because with Crohn's disease, this part, the terminal ileum, it um, strictures, it kind of breaks down and collapses almost. So my bit of that has been cut out and another bit reformed. So yeah, that's known as the terminal ileum. Now for an ileostomy, a lot of the time with ileostomy, if people have had bowel cancer and they've had bowel cancer in the large bowels, uh, an ulcerative colitis is quite known to be very functional in the large intestines as well, that that gets damaged so much through bowel disease or through bowel cancer, etc., that the large colon will get removed. So what will happen is this piece would generally be removed and the ileostomy would be attached to the ileum. So it'd be attached to the small intestine because this has obviously been removed because of whatever bowel disease it is that you've got. So ileum, ili, ileostomy. And ileostomies generally are on the right hand side. 
is where they generally sit. Again, that can change, they can move over a bit, but they're generally on the, the right hand side. So ili is your ilium, so ileostomy, attaches to the small intestine. Now, most people that will have an ileostomy won't use clothes bags, they will use drainable bags. Reason being is the small intestines will move a lot quicker and they generally are a lot thinner, as in the output is not or is almost liquid based it's a lot lot thinner than a colostomy so if it's a lot thinner what that means is that bag's going to fill up a hell of a lot quicker and it's easier to have drainable bags where you can take it to the toilet undo the base of the bag drain it into the toilet otherwise people with ileostomies are going to be changing their bags all day long and that's not going to be any good for your skin so with a colostomy like mine i use clothes bags because I've still got most of, well, I've still got the majority of my small intestine. I've had some of it removed and I've got the majority of my large colon. So when the poo, if you like, let's just call it poo, let's keep it simple. Or you get the food that comes in and it starts getting, the bowels do their thing. I'm not a doctor. They, they do their thing. And once it gets into the large colon, it's the large colon where poos will start to really take form and, and take the shape that we know except for me with Crohn's, mine were always various. <laughs> uh, so once it gets into the large, it starts thickening up, uh, more moisture is pulled out of it, which generally gives you a stool. So with a colostomy, I don't have a huge amount of input. It's very slow and it's quite thick. Whereas with an ileostomy, it's all in the small intestines and it hasn't started to form yet. Moisture isn't being pulled away from it yet because it's not in there. So it makes it a more kind of a liquidy base which means that bag is going to fill up a lot quicker so there you go quick simple video of difference between a colostomy and an ileostomy uh, so yeah for, remember if someone says they've got a colostomy think colon colon ostomy large colon large intestine and people that say they've got an ileostomy if you try and understand which one it is in your head when they're telling you they've got an ileostomy just think of the small intestines the ileum ileostomy and that's it simple as that really uh, so like i say one on the right, one on the left, generally, but that can vary as well. Hope you found that useful. Uh, stick something in the comments if you liked it. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care. Bye now.